In this video, I'll be recreating the YouTube mobile app without writing any code. And I'll be doing it in just 4 hours. Don't ask why 4 hours, it's arbitrary. Flutterflow is a low-code tool that claims to help you build mobile iOS and Android apps quickly with minimal coding. I don't like no-code tools for obvious reasons, but I've heard good things about Flutterflow. So for our first Flutterflow project, let's recreate the entire YouTube mobile app. My lawyer, by which I mean ChatGPT, advised me to start this video with a disclaimer. So, this video is for educational purposes only. The app created in this tutorial is for demonstration purposes and it is not intended for commercial use or distribution. With that out of the way, let's get started. I wasn't sure if it is okay to use the YouTube logo in my app, so before starting the 4 hour countdown, I opted into Photoshop to create a parody logo for our app. Fortunately, my logo features a terminal that looks very similar to the YouTube logo, so I just removed the V, adapted the colors to match, and added the name of the app. Once that was done, I exported the app icon along with the dark and light visions of the resulting logo. With my assets ready, it was now time to start the countdown. The best way to speed up any development task is to start with a plan and a pre-existing design. That's why tools like Figma and Adobe XD exist. They basically allow you to design and prototype your app before you begin development. Fortunately, YouTube has already done that for us. So I opened the YouTube app on my phone and did some research. By which I mean taking screenshots of all the pages and noting down how each component works. This research <coughs> will be very useful in a second. Let's open into Flutterflow and create a new project. From my research, I knew that the YouTube app has a bottom nav bar that allows you to move between the different main pages. So the first thing I did was recreate this nav bar. To do this in Flutterflow is fairly simple. I went into the widget tree and under pages, I created pages for the home page, shorts page, upload page, subscriptions page and profile page. Once those were created, I went into the settings and enabled show nav bar. Then I went into each page and added a custom nav bar icon and label. Material UI has icons for all these buttons, but I had to adjust the plus icon button manually to make it bigger. The final nav bar turned out perfect, but I had to change the primary color from the default purple to black to match the YouTube app. The YouTube app bar has a logo on the left and a row of icons on the right. Another thing to note is that the app bar is collapsible, so it moves when the user scrolls. A Flutter flow or Flutter app bar is made out of three components, the leading, the title, and the actions. So I placed the logo in the leading and then placed a row with three icons inside the actions. You probably already know this, but a row in Flutterflow arranges its children horizontally and a column arranges them vertically. That's why we used a row for the icons here. At 8 minutes, my app bar was complete. So I thought this was going to be very easy. Little did I know, I had already made the first mistake that was going to come back and bite me in the ass. If you are familiar with Flutter or Flutterflow, you'll see it right there. I didn't notice at the time, so I moved on to the content inside the app. YouTube content is presented in an endless flow of video after video. To replicate this in our app, I enabled vertical scrolling on the main column. Flutter columns allow vertical scrolling and rows allow horizontal scrolling. At the top of the column, I added a row with the navigational button and styled it. Then I added the rest of the tag buttons and enabled scrolling on the row. Next, I had to add a separate column to contain the videos. This is very important since everything inside the column will serve as a template for the videos once we generate them dynamically. To create a template for the videos, I had to break the videos down. Each YouTube video is displayed as a column with a row containing an image inside it, followed by another row with a circular image, a column with text, and a row with text and an icon button. 
Once this was laid out, all I had to do was style everything properly and duplicate the video column multiple times. This allowed me to test whether the vertical scrolling of the videos worked, confirming that everything was in order. The navigation button on YouTube opens a drawer with navigation items. To replicate this in Flutterflow, I added an app drawer in the widget tree. In the drawer, I added a column with an image at the top and a bunch of buttons below it. To match the ones on YouTube, I made the background of the buttons transparent or white, added matching icons and positioned them correctly. After the draw was done, I closed the drawer and added an action to the navigation button to trigger the drawer. As you can see, the draw works perfectly. At the one hour mark, the home page was complete, or so I thought. So I moved on to the shorts page. The shorts page is made out of two components, a list of vertical videos and icons overlaid on them. To do this in Flutterflow, I used a stack. A stack is basically a Flutterflow component that puts elements on top of one another. I used a stack to put a list view of videos and a column of buttons inside for the overlays. Inside the list view, I put a column with a container inside it. The container will contain an image that takes the entire width and height of the screen. I then duplicated this and checked if it scrolled horizontally. Once I confirmed that, I added the like, dislike, comment, share, and remix buttons. Then I styled and positioned them correctly using the padding and alignment. I'm happy with how this turned out, so I duplicated this multiple times and moved on to the subscriptions page. The subscriptions page is very similar to the home page, except this one has a list of channels here. Because I'm lazy, I just copied the home page into the subscriptions page. But by doing so, I unknowingly copied the mistake I made earlier on the home page. You see, these are just icons here. In Flutterflow, there are three types of buttons. Regular buttons, icon buttons, and icons. Icons are technically not buttons because they are not clickable. So these icons here can't do anything. But let's move on. I'll fix that later. I had to remove the navigation button and then add a list of channels between the app bar and the tags. The channel list is made out of a row with a column that has a circular image and text below it. I duplicated the channel column multiple times, changed the images, and made sure the row is scrollable to finish up the subscriptions page. The profile page has a row of icon buttons in the app bar, so my first task was to add those. Then I broke the rest of the page into parts, a main column with rows inside it. The first row contains a circular image, a column with a header, and a row with two texts inside it. The second row will have buttons. These buttons will have an alternate background color as well as a leading icon. Additionally, this row needs to be scrollable. Next, I added a row with a column inside it. Inside the column, I added a container for the image and text for the channel name below it. Then I resized and styled these, then duplicated them and ensured they were scrollable. I duplicated all these elements and changed a few things for the playlists. To complete the profile page, I added a row of buttons for your videos, downloads, your clips and movies. Once these were done, I was happy with how the profile page looked. However, at this point, I discovered that I used icons instead of icon buttons on the home page and subscriptions page. At this time, I was already 3 hours into the challenge, so I was faced with a choice. Do I polish the home page and make these icon buttons functional, or create the remaining pages? Let me start this section by saying I don't have very good decision making skills because instead of focusing on the upload page and finishing that, I chose to take a detour and make the icon buttons on the home page functional. At this point, I only had an hour remaining and in addition to that, this button here leads to the search page and this one leads 
to the notifications page and the final button here triggers a custom dialog box all of which i have to create in addition to the upload pages i created a folder for the pages and components and got to work i'm not going to bore you with the creation of the pages because it is the same thing I've done on the other pages. The only difference being that on the search page, I had to add a text field to the app bar and on the notifications page, I had to use a list tile to represent the notifications. After creating those pages, I linked them to their respective icons and got to work on the custom dialog. For the custom dialog, I created a new component with a main column with rows inside it. The top row as text and an icon button to dismiss the pop-up. In the second row, I added an animation and text. To finish it up, I added two buttons and styled them correctly. I was happy with how it turned out, so I linked it to its respective icon and tested it. When working on a project like this, Productivity typically decreases over time, so it's a good idea to take breaks, but the clock was ticking so I couldn't take any break. As a result, it took me more time to fix the icon buttons and make those pages, so at this point I had no time left. Luckily, the upload page was fairly simple to create. I used a tab bar with three tabs, one for short videos, one for normal videos and another for going live. Within each tab, I added a column with a row and an icon at the top, followed by a descriptive text for each and a button. Once everything was done, I, I had exceeded the 4 hour time limit, but I was happy with the outcome of the app. I will leave a link in the description for you to check out the app and possibly download the APK and source code. Let me know if you'd like me to finish this thing up by making it possible to upload videos and fetch them from Firebase. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.